Welcome to the investigation of medical robots. My name is Isaac Negron. With me are my colleagues Jose Perdomo and Adrian Semenov. What's considered a robot? ISO defines a robot as an actuated mechanism programmable with a degree of independence performing tasks within its environment. These are some of the main medical robotic fields. In the essence of time, we'll be focused on surgical robots, rehabilitation robots, and bio robots. Next is Jose to talk about the history of robots. The field of robotics can be traced back to the ancient world. Notes and drawings from inventors in that time describe robotic and autonomous mechanisms. An example of this is famous Leonardo da Vinci's knight. In his notes, he described a human-like mechanism composed of pulleys and cables that was able to perform movements similar to human ones. In 2002, a NASA roboticist tried reproducing Da Vinci's prototype, as you can see in this picture. Now, in the medical field, when someone mentions robotics, most people think about surgical robots. The first actual documented robot used in surgery was in 1985, which was used to orient the needle in a brain biopsy. Prior to surgical robots, robotic mechanisms used as prosthesis can be traced back to the 1500s. These examples do not compare to the technologies available today. We will talk about specific examples in the field stated before. Surgical robots are computer and robotically assisted mechanisms used in surgical procedures. The scope of this field is to reduce human error during surgery, improve minimally invasive sur surgery, and providing better ergonomics for surgeons and patients. There are two main fields in which under surgery robots are being developed, telerobotic and image-guided systems. A quick history on these systems. The merging of mechanical manipulators developed in the 1940s and the 1950s, and the endoscopic technologies of the 80s gave birth to, gave birth to this medical field. One of the first robots to make use of these technologies was the ProBot. It was, completely, uh, it was a completely automated system that used an ultrasound map of the prostate to carry out its operations. Also during 1992, RoboDog was launched to the market. This, ro with this robot was based on a 4 degree of freedom industrial arm and was used to perform orthopedic surgery. Lastly, in 1997, the Da Vinci system was FDA approved to assist in surgery and in 2000 it was approved for laparoscopy. The Da Vinci system is a surgery assistant that is used in multiple surgical fields, such as urology, gynecology, and cardiology. The system features four main components, an ergonomic console, four seven degree of freedom arms, and the wrist instruments capable of simulating hand movements, and a high definition visual system with a 3D endoscope. Prior to the birth of this system, Two prototypes were made. The first one, called Lenny, was best based on an existing industrial arm and it had seven degree of freedom. It also featured a visual system composed of commercially available parts. The second prototype, created a year later, was called Mona. It featured interchangeable instruments and a dynamic support fixed on the side of the operating table. Both prototypes had different issues, but the design released in 1997 had a way to back on the down and gave birth to this famous system. Even though this system has been released for 15 years and multiple models have been released, some disadvantages have been identified. First, the system is too expensive, too big and complex to set up. Over the last year, traditional methods have caught up to the system and many believe that this is not feasible anymore. Some suggestions for the system will be to reduce the size of the equipment and with the advance of technologies such as micro-robotics and nano-robotics, the possibility of making smaller and affordable mechanisms will be there. Next, Adrian will talk about rehabilitation robotics. Rehabilitation robotics is a unique flavor of medical robotics, that is, used to aid people to recuperate from physical trauma or assist them in daily living. 
The World Health Organization reckoned that about 5 million people globally remain permanently immobilized after a stroke. Rehabilitation robots can help improve these circumstances. The reorganization of motor skills can be done due to neuroplasticity of the human brain. That is, the potential that the brain has to reorganize itself by creating new neural pathways to adapt as it needs. The development of such devices would benefit in the change of patient's attitude, behavior, and enhancing patient's commitment to training and recovery of motor functions. History of re Rehabilitation Robotics. The case manipulator was the first testimonial rehabilitation robot built with a four degree of freedom, orthosis. That is the correction of limbs or spine by the use of braces. <clears throat> by the 1990s, fixed sight robots became popular in commercial use, such as MIT Manus. It offered a back drivability mechanism, creating a stable and gentle feel to the patient. Back drivability is the ability of shared transmission forces between input and output axes, making the MIT Manus the standard for rehabilitation robotics for stroke patients. The way this works, specifically for wrist rehabilitation, is by involving the patient to hold a robotic joystick that safeguards the patient's arm. While attempting to move in a particular motion, the movement would stimulate the brain in making a new connection, which would eventually help the patient to relearn movement of that limb independently. The motivation for the movement then comes from the joystick connected to a computer monitor, which displays simple tasks analogous to a video game. The standard task will involve trying to reposition the robot's handle toward a moving or stationary target flashed on the computer screen. The movement of the patient in the wrong direction or no movement at all will initiate the robotic arm to gently nudge the patient's arm in the right direction, as seen in the photo. The influence of risk rehabilitation robotics shows uh, the graph shows changes in the wrist movements while moving unconfined towards the targets at the beginning of the treatment, the top part, and the discharge of rehabilitation introductory patient at the bottom. The top graph shows little or no movement, while the bottom graph shows significant signs of movement while flexing. Today's therapy device for neuromuscular re rehabilitation has given previous designs and theory to reproduce the hand of hope. The Hand of Hope is a portable, wearable, and patient-controlled robot. It starts with the intention of movement to a motor that transmits the motion signal to an electromyography graph EMG sensor. The interactive EMG signal displays on the computer screen, promoting positive feedback, increasing self-initiated muscular activity after stroke at any place at any time. Lastly, is Isaac with Biorobotics. The study of biorobots, or biorobotics, encompasses the disciplines of cybernetics, bionics, and genetic engineering. The main purpose of biorobotics is to simulate living organisms in a, both a mechanical and a chemical sense. Biorobots are mostly directed towards helping people, whether it is with patients and prosthetics, or with training and enhancing a doctor's ability with virtual reality and advanced surgery tools. Although still in its youth, biorobotics is a multidisciplinary field with limitless possibilities. Biomechanics studies the force and motion of living organisms. Better understanding allows for higher quality and detail in prosthetics. Neural engineering has made great advances in prosthetics with the current work on the bionic arm, which is a mechanical arm that can be controlled by either neural impulses or buttons placed on the user's shoe. Nanotechnology has been exploited to repair DNA and directly deliver drugs to specified cells. The highly articulated robotic probe, or HARP, is something that may become an option for a minimally invasive cardiac surgery. The HARP snake design allows it to enter the body through a small incision to the chest and perform <coughs> cardiac procedures while avoiding surrounding systems. It is a low cost design that can be made of varying FDA approved materials, but there is no built in visualization of the current prototype. In conclusion, the proposal of medical robots has been an idea that has been around since the ancient world, which has since expanded into the many branches that exist today. Medical robots have a bright future as technology advances 
and can minimize costs of surgery and rehabilitation.